Good morning, church. Let's sing together. Come, let us all unite to sing. God is love. Let heaven and earth their praises bring. God is love. Let every soul from sin away. Each in his heart sweet music make. And sing with us for Jesus' sake, for God is love. God is love. God is love. Come, let us all unite to sing that God is love. How happy is our portion here. God is love. His promises are spirits cheer. God is love. He is our sin and shield by day. Our help, our hope, our strength and stay. He will be with us all the way. Our God is love. God is love, God is love. Come, let us all unite to sing that God is love. Since the love of God has shed priceless blessings on my head, I have made it my own. I will hide it in my heart, that it never may depart. It shall rule there alone. The love of God within the heart will kindly death and warmth impart. The soul will glow like Jesus in his tender mercy. If the heart is made his dwelling place, the love of God glows like a flame. Through endless years it is the same. The love of God will never fail nor lose its glory till we see him face to face. While his love burns true and bright, we are walking in the light. He has shown us the road. We his glory must reflect, lest our dimness and neglect keep some soul from its God. The love of God within the heart will kindly nest and warmth impart. The soul will glow like Jesus in his tender mercy. If the heart is made his dwelling place, the love of God glows like a flame. Through endless years it is the same. The love of God will never fail nor lose his glory till we see him face to face. Good morning, church. It's good to be here again. Uh, I look out amongst you. <laughs> I don't see many of you, but I... <laughs> it's, it, it's great to look to see where you used to sit. I know you're out there because I feel your presence. And uh, it's always good to be here at church together. Uh, this is a special day. Uh, this is Mother's Day. And I think that... It's not a biblical uh, holiday, but I think it could be. I think of all the mothers in the Bible, how important they were, and, uh, how God used mothers, how he, his mother was there for him, how he was there. Of course, she was there in the beginning. She was there in his first miracle. In fact, she was in charge of a wedding. And she ran out of wine. He created wine. She was there all through his ministry. You see, at her house with Martha and 
everyone, and it was a family affair. We see her at his trial, at his death, at his crucifixion. And we see her at his resurrection. I think mothers are so important, and we don't think about that all the time. And I, I, I want to thank my mother, who was very important. I'm supposed to look at the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, my one of the greatest people in my life was Mama May. She was my grandmother, my grandfather's second wife after she passed away. And what an influence she was. What a Christian lady. Back before we had youth ministers, we had mothers like Mama May who would invite us to their house, who would invite all the kids around and was just such an influence. And I, think, I want to thank all the mothers today and uh, let's go to our Father in prayer. Holy Father, we do thank you for mothers. We thank you for all that they do for us. We thank you for the examples we have in your word of all the great women and how important they are to us. We pray that you continue with us today as we worship you and we praise you and we thank you for all our mothers. In Christ's name, amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I Till my trophies 
at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a service for the Lord's Supper. So um, if you need to open up your uh, packages and get the cracker ready, take the time to do so as I read from John chapter 6, verses 53 through 58. The Jews said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the Father, as a living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Bow to him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you've given us. We thank you for this time to be able to come together and to worship you. We want to thank you now, though, for sending your Son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could one day be with you in heaven. We want to take this bread, which represents his body, in a worthy manner, pleasing in your sight. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, wanting to just thank you for sending your Son to die on that cross for us, just so that we could all be saved, so that we could all have a chance to be with you. We want to take this cup, which represents his blood, in a worthy manner that's pleasing in your sight. And it's in your Son I pray. Amen. There's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the king. As an ensign fair we lift it up today, while as ransom souls we sing. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but lost. For the king of kings, Toil and see beneath the banner of the cross. Over land and sea, wherever man may dwell, make the glorious things known. Of the crimson banner, now the story tell, while the Lord shall claim his own. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but lost. For the King of kings, toil and sing beneath the banner of the cross. <laughs> you know, sometimes there are certain things that happen and it's kind of like being on a roller coaster and you just can't get off, right, man? <laughs> man, I tell you, we, uh, we uh, love, um, it, it is always good to be together. And uh, the, uh, we, we, <laughs> what you don't know is we were kidding around earlier about singing the right song to the wrong tune. And, and uh, God bless you, man. <laughs> We love you, Rex, and uh, your, your enthusiasm is always an inspiration, and uh, um, that's just, uh, anyway. 
Sometimes things happen, you know? And uh, so now we know what it's like to do a TV show live. There you go. It's just, the, yeah, yeah, take two. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. I had one of the, uh, one of the great um, uh, weekends, um, and still having a great weekend, um, uh, this past week. I went uh, Thursday and Friday to my folks' um, house up in McAllister, Oklahoma, or outside of McAllister, and uh, got to spend a, uh, a, a Mother's and Father's Day weekend with them, took them a couple of things, and and uh, whenever we go up there, um, in the words of my nephew, we ride the Kubota, we cut down brush, and we burn it. And, uh, you know, and that's what we did. Um, and I was just reminded, as Bill was so eloquently speaking um, just a moment ago, that um, this is a day truly to be thankful uh, for our moms and not everyone um, has uh, it, it's not necessarily a happy time for everyone it is a time sometimes of, of, of pain to be quite honest um, but here's the amazing thing that this reminds us we all have the opportunity, whatever the feelings, whatever the emotions, whatever it is, to rely once again on God. Because no matter the situation, He fills our greatest needs. For those of us who are blessed with, uh, with really great, fun, loving moms, we praise God. For those of us who, who that may be a struggle, uh, maybe they haven't been blessed with children of their own and they would like to be. Um, or maybe it is that their own mother wasn't all that great. God will provide and fill that need. You can trust him for that. This morning, we continue in our series on the names of God. And one of the great things about each of these names is that it reminds us of a God who loves us and continues to fill our greatest needs. We've seen Jehovah Jireh, a God who provides. We have seen... Uh, Jehovah Ra last week, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He provides for us mouthful by mouthful, moment by moment. And, and, they, and the list continues to go on. This morning, we look at Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. When we sing of a, of a banner, we, we think of, of, of something that, that, that is usually colorful, that goes on a building or that is hung on a pole. And for us who live in the United States of America, we have a great banner. It, it has a name. It's, it, the name is, is Old Glory. And there's a great song that was written about that in the uh, about that banner in the War of 1812 that we often sing, the Star Spangled Banner, right? Um, and we watch as we sing before sporting events, and and I am one of those people that doesn't. It, no matter who's singing, I don't care how good they are or how bad they are. I'm going to sing because I'm proud to be an American. But you know, it's not just about our great flag, is it? That flag represents something. We're going to see this morning in Exodus chapter 17 that as Moses called 
the Lord, called God, the Lord is my banner. The Lord who is my banner. We're going to see that this banner, it represents a promise. It calls us to a priority. And because of this great banner, we are blessed with a people. Promise, priority, people. If you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. In the story of the Exodus, you will, you will be familiar that, that Moses uh, was raised up. He was sent out into the desert. He comes back to Egypt and he says, Pharaoh, let my people go. You will remember that God reaped uh, 12, uh, 10 uh, plagues upon Egypt. And finally, Pharaoh said, go. They went. They went through the Dead Sea. They have seen amazing things happen. Just a couple of weeks ago, we talked about them grumbling against Moses and saying, we're thirsty. God healed the water. And they were able to drink it. They ended up in an amazing oasis. And God called them to leave that place. And once again, they were thirsty, forgetting that God had provided. They grumble again, and this time God doesn't, doesn't throw or call Moses to throw a, uh, a log into the water. He says, strike the rock, and he strikes the rock, water pours forth. Well, then they, they go a little bit further, and in Exodus chapter 17, we pick up the story there. Verse 8, <clears throat> then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up on the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. While Aaron and Hur held up his hands. One... On one side, the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua <clears throat> overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nissi. A hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. The Lord is my banner. We're going to see in, in this story the three P's. There is a promise, there is, we are called to a priority, and we are blessed with a people. You see, when we look at this idea, when the children of Israel rose up their, raised up their voice to God and cried up as they were in Egypt, God went to them and God led them out through, by using Moses. He took them to a new place. He didn't just 
simply relieve some of their suffering. God, as our banner, reminds us that this place is not as good as it gets. During this uh, crazy, unprecedented time, uh, we have probably had some extra opportunity to sit and ponder. And one of the great things that I have pondered during some of these extra times and in the evenings as we, um, in, in the evening as we, we walk around our neighborhood, I have thought as, beauty, as, uh, as beautiful as spring is in Terrell, Texas, this is not as good as it gets. The story of God is always, since the fall of mankind, it is always that the banner of God is always taking us from where we are to where God desires us to be. And that is ultimately with Him. Now, it hasn't happened yet, but there will be a day that that promise is fulfilled. There will be a day that we can say, truly, it doesn't get any better than this. There are those of us, there are those that we know that have reached that final reward. Now the amazing thing about this idea is that believers and unbelievers alike know, believers know, unbelievers hope that there's something better than this. Even though they will devoutly say this is as good as it gets. The promise can only be based on a promise maker. And that promise maker is God. So first, Jehovah Nisi says that that represents a promise and therefore a promise maker. Secondly, Jehovah Nisi, God, the Lord is our banner, calls us to a priority. There's a great memorial of the Iwo Jima Memorial in which you see a number of men holding the flag of the United States of America atop a hill in Iwo Jima. And they're seeking to raise that flag. The picture of that is in the back of all of our minds. We know that. We know what it means. They are seeking to raise that flag because it does multiple things. One, it rallies the troops. Secondly, it says victory. One of the great old hymns that we sing is Victory in Jesus. If the Lord is our banner, it means that He has victory over our hearts. And it calls us to a priority. And what is that priority? That priority is following Him. So where He leads, we will follow. What he says, we will do. Where he calls us, we will go. Discipleship is moving.
from the self-focused and self-confidence to our confidence being in God and our focus is on the other. Jehovah Nisi says, represents a promise and calls us to a priority. The question of discipleship is not simply the question of how am I doing? But the question of discipleship is first and foremost, how does a good God love me? See, that's what the banner of God represents. We have to first ask that question. For some of us who were born in this, in this great nation of ours, sometimes you may ask, why was I born here? Right? Why not in some other country that's ruled by a horrible, terrible tyrant? Why here? Where I get to year after year go and I, and I vote and I have a say in whether we love our government or we don't like it. It's amazing that we have this amazing opportunity. In the same way, the questions of discipleship are one, why does a good God love me? And after we come to grips with that, then there's some follow-up questions. If I bask in that truth of God loving me, then I have to ask this. If God loves me, how am I doing loving everyone that he puts in front of me? Jehovah Nisi represents a promise. It calls us to a priority, and that priority is discipleship. And then finally... The Lord is our banner. He blesses us with a people. I love the picture of this story. Moses raising his hands and the, the, the army of Joshua wins. His arms get tired and he lowers the Amalek winds, begins to win, and he raises them and Joshua. And what happens? Eventually, Moses gets tired. But he writes very specifically that Aaron and Hur goes up on the mountain with Moses. And then it says that one of the men brings a rock and Moses sits, and for the long day, Moses raises his hand, and Aaron and Hur hold his arms up. Jehovah Nisi moves us from isolation to community. If God is our banner, if the Lord is our banner, we are not isolated. We are in community. We have been placed in a family. Again, Bill said so well that, that, that we don't see many of you here, but we see where you sit. Herschel and Roxy Box. The Britain Group. The Hutchesons, the Hunters, the Rogers. The Taylors and the Taylors, because they move around. The 
Misty Burns, soon to be with Ty, as we pray for that. You see, Jehovah Nisi isn't about isolation, but about a people. We move from isolation to community because God is our banner. The Lord is our banner. Now the true beautiful part of this shows up in the Gospel of John. Chapter 12, beginning in verse 32. Where it says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. You see, the Lord is my banner, is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. The only way that God can be your banner is through Jesus Christ. Through trusting in His death, His resurrection, and ultimately His ascension, that He is now sitting at the right hand of God, and we are awaiting His return. So this morning, be reminded that God is our banner through His beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And that by Him, who has been lifted up on the cross for you and for me, who has through power of resurrection has come out of the grave to conquer sin and death for you and me, and now is waiting to return to fulfill the great promise of a place that is better than this. And as we wait, remember that we are called to the priority of discipleship. To love everyone that God puts in front of us because he has loved us so well. God bless you. Have a great Mother's Day. Celebrate well. We love you all. See you soon. Again, we want to thank you for being here and tuning us in this morning. We especially want to thank all our mothers again. And I know you think I forgot one. But I, I want to thank the mother of my children, Karen Looney, for being there for us all these years. For me, it's been 50, and she's been a wonderful person. So let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for our church. We thank you for when two or more of us gather together that you're with us. Help us to feel your presence and uh, always honor you. We continue to pray for Patsy Walker and Ty Burns. We can't wait till they can be back here again with us. And this is our prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen.